Wouldn't you like your life to be a little bit more fun? Today we are gamifying your life and turning the fun things and the not so fun things into a game so that you can get your best creative work done. That's coming up. What's going on, everybody? I am Youngman Brown, and this is Your Creative Push, the podcast in the YouTube channel that's all about helping you to push past your creative resistances so that you can live your best creative life. And today we're talking about gamification and how you can turn your daily creative practice into a game so that you get external motivation for the things that are fun for you, but also the things that are not so fun for you. And there's apps out there like Habitica and Epic Win and Super Better and Zombies Run and even Forest that turn your daily practice into a game and make the not so fun things like exercising or saving money or just putting in the grind work uh, and turns them into something fun. But you're a creative person, so you're going to make your own game today. And each person's game is going to be a little bit different. You know the things that you need to work on. But I'm going to give you eight methods, eight tips for creating your own game, things that you can implement into your own game of life so that you can make your life much more enjoyable. Now, the first and maybe most obvious way that you can turn your life into a game is by giving yourself points. (laughs) points. <laughs> now, points are pretty meaningless, especially when you are the one that's giving yourself them, but perhaps you can save those points up for a reward that you get at a future date. We'll get to that in a moment, but giving yourself points is a great way to track your progress, to see how many points you can get in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year, and the points that you're giving yourself are most likely going to be for the tasks that you have trouble getting to, the things that you need that external motivation for. For me, I woke up early today before 9 o'clock, so I got three points. (laughs) Um, Making this video, I'm getting five points. All the tasks that give you a bit of that mental resistance when you think about them, assign yourself a point level so that you have a reward for getting to them. It gives you a bit of more motivation before you get to it, and it makes it much more rewarding after you finally complete that task. Now, the second tip I have for you is an important one. It's giving yourself as many wins as you possibly can throughout your day. So it's taking the big goals that you have, things that are going to take multiple hours, and chunking them down into smaller, tangible, bite-sized goals and giving yourself points every time you get one of those segments done. So if you have a drawing, perhaps, that's going to take you four hours, break that down into eight 30-minute segments or however it works for you. Give yourself a reward every time you get one of those segments done and maybe give yourself a bonus. For me, when I edit the podcast, I know that every one minute of audio takes me about three minutes to edit. So if I want to edit for about two hours to get a complete episode done, I actually chunk it down to 15-minute segments. And every 15 minutes, I want to get done five minutes of editing. And I actually write down every timestamp for those 15-minute segments. I give myself a point every 15 minutes that I get done. And I give myself a five-point bonus if I do all of those segments in a row. So your wins are going to be broken down depending on what it is that you do, what it is that you have trouble with. But give yourself as many wins as you possibly can so that you get those small moments of satisfaction and you get those external uh, wins every time you get one of those segments done. That will help you in each segment and will help you as in your day as a whole. Now, when Mer Lafferty was on the show, she talked about her gamification system and she uses something called the Magic Spreadsheet with her accountability partners where they track their daily word counts. And the magic spreadsheet is weighted way more towards consistency than a huge daily word count day. And I completely agree with this mindset. I think it's much more important to have small daily wins to get to your creative passion every single day in little ways to build up that habit than it is to have one big day where you find a bunch of motivation and work all day and burn yourself out so that you can't even work the next day. So 
give yourself streak bonuses every single day or week that you consistently create. Give yourself a bonus and have it be incremental the longer the streak continues so that you can keep building on that momentum that you have built from your daily practice. Now, going along with this, a great way to give yourself long-term motivation from month to month, from year to year, is to give yourself levels and allow yourself to level up. This takes the focus away from these long-term intangible goals that um, you might not even be able to see where you're going to be in five years' time, in 10 years' time. You might not be able to see how you're able to write an entire novel or paint an entire gallery's worth of paintings or write a symphony or whatever it is that you do. This instead allows you to focus back in on the tangible goals of just getting your daily work done and not worrying about the long-term results of the art that you're creating. So give yourself levels and maybe just like a RPG or a video game, uh, it takes you 100 points to get from level 1 to 2. To get to level 3, it takes you another 300 points. To get to level 4, it takes you another 1,000 points. You can make it exponential. You can make it however you want. Whatever you think will give you that motivation. This is your game after all. But allow yourself to have those long-term rewards, the long-term level ups. Now, the fifth tip I have is possibly the most fun, and it's rewards. Reward yourself. Give yourself an actual thing to strive for. They could be short-term rewards, so instead of giving yourself a point for every 15 minutes of work you do and saying, congratulations, good job, maybe give yourself a piece of candy. Or maybe after four hours of work, give yourself 30 minutes of video game time. It's important that you don't give yourself a reward that you know will send you into a black hole that a vortex that you'll never escape from and ruin your entire day, but give yourself rewards that you can control nonetheless. And also maybe save up for long-term rewards. Use your points towards a rewards list, like a trip or new materials. You know your thing and you know what's going to make you happy. And this is your game, so I trust you. But give yourself some sort of external motivation other than just fake points. Give yourself something that you know that you'll like and something that you will actually strive for. Now, the sixth tip I have for you is punishments. And actually, I'm going to suggest against giving yourself punishments. I have toyed with punishments in the past, but what ends up happening inevitably to every creative person is that you hit busy seasons in your life or you just hit creative blocks and you're actually doing yourself a disservice by trying to push through. And a lot of this has to do with just getting to know yourself and getting to know your creative seasons, which I've made a video about, which will be linked up somewhere around here. But hitting yourself with point deductions and punishments might really seem like a good idea on paper so that you can reinforce the good habits, but we're all going to hit those rough patches. And when you have punishment after punishment, it can be really demoralizing and it can make you want to quit your game altogether. So I suggest against it. Because sometimes just, you know, losing your streak bonus is punishment enough. So be kind to yourself and go off of that positive reinforcement that you're giving yourself with the points or with whatever system you've set up for yourself with rewards uh, and, and rely on that instead of being hard on yourself and giving yourself those punishments. That's just my suggestion. You know yourself much better. Perhaps you need punishments for those really bad habits that you need to break. That's up to you. But for me, it does not work. Now, the seventh tip I have for you is possibly my favorite. And it's something I strongly urge you to incorporate into your own game. And it's the concept of bosses. If you don't want to think of them as bosses, as something that you need to defeat as an enemy, you can think of them as bonuses. But stuff like books that you want to read that will help you, courses, developing new skills, uh, whatever it is for you individually. Or maybe it's something that you have to work on, like a scale that you have to work on, or uh, drawing hands, or, or something that you know that you have to work on, that you haven't worked on, that you need to get to, or a new skill that you want to acquire. And assign it a big points level. Like reading a book that you really want to read is 100 points. You can give yourself points along the way or just one big windfall of points after you've accomplished it. But these are sort of like side quests. 
things that you are going to accomplish along your way and ways that you can achieve extra points in your spare time. And I'll even go so far as to tell you to write down your dream goals, things that you want to achieve in five years time, in 10 years time, things that you think you'll never be able to achieve. So something that you think would be great if you could achieve that in 10 years, actually calculate how many points you can get per day and then times that by 365 and then times that by 10. And it might be an insane number, like 20,000 points, whatever your system is, write that next to that goal and then actually strive to achieve that goal today. There's no reason that you can't find a cheat code and there's no reason that you can't warp ahead a few levels and skip all of these imaginary uh, blocks that are in your way that you have somehow decided that in 10 years time you'll get to it. Actually go for that goal today and see what happens. You might be very, very surprised and that points level might give you that motivation to actually try to get to it today. Now, my eighth and final tip is a really important one as well. At least it's very important for me because this whole thing, gamifying your creative life, is supposed to make things more fun. But even if it is more fun, you can still get burnout if you do it too much. And for me, this was a problem because I am a workaholic and I worked way too much Monday through Friday. My work would seep in through Saturday and Sunday and for a while, my balance was way off, and it affected my relationship with my wife. So we made rules with each other. We said no work on Saturday. So for me, this was very tough at first because, yes, I was taking time off, and yes, I was just sitting on the couch, but I was thinking about doing work. I was thinking about all the time I was wasting that I could be getting ahead on the podcast and everything else that I had to do until I switched my mindset and until I incorporated Saturdays into my game as bonus rounds and I flipped all my points levels. So now if I do work on Saturdays, I actually lose points and I get points for going out and seeing friends or spending time alone on the couch with my wife and doing nothing. So it's really important to have that balance and to incorporate balance into your game and to have days where everything's flipped and you give yourself points for going to a museum or going out in nature, going out and exercising, going to a park, going to the forest, whatever it is for you that will give you that balance, that will give you that external motivation um, where you're getting that input incorporate that into your game and make a completely different bonus round day for yourself. So I hope that these tips were helpful for you. Remember that the entire purpose of gamifying your life is to make it more fun. So whatever you incorporate into your own game of life, make sure it's something that brings you that joy and it brings you that sense of reward and accomplishment because at the end of the day, that is the thing that is going to keep you motivated long term. And that is what we want. We want you to create your art every single day, every single month, every single year. If you want to hear more about gamifying your art life, you can check out the videos on the screen now where we talked at length about that. They're also in the description below. And also, please let me know below in the comments which one of these methods are you going to incorporate into your game of life. I love you all. We'll see you in the next video.